Coming up today on this week's episode, PlayStation Vita already considered a car wreck, PlayStation Vita's RAM revealed, and PS3 cross-game chat debunked, Xbox 360's new dashboard named and detailed, PS3 version of Battlefield 3 to surpass the 360 version, and much, much more. This is Nick's Gaming View. Hello everybody and welcome to Nick's Game Review episode number 49. You're here with your host, Nick McCandless. I apologize for not having a show the past two weeks. It's been insane. Two weeks ago I got called up for a vacation, I guess I could say. And I've been working on something that I had to get sent off last week. Hopefully I can speak on that in the near future. But I do apologize. It's going back to the weekly show. Usually if there's not a show that's because I'm working on something else very important related to what I'm doing so I do apologize for that but I have a great show ahead of you guys now the PlayStation Vita already being considered a car wreck Lyle Hall president of Heavy Iron Studios developer of titles such as Connects UFC trainer SpongeBob SquarePants Truth or Square and more raised the following question during an interview in regards to the upcoming PlayStation Vita quote if people aren't willing to pay $249 for a Nintendo 3DS, why would they pay $299 for Vita? End quote. He later went on to say, quote, People don't want to carry more than one thing in their pocket. That's why Android and iPhone have done so well. They're the devices of choice. They offer multiple functions outside of gaming. People don't want it. The technology is sweet. I'm a huge fan of mobile technology, but I just don't know there's a market out there anymore for the hardware. I can't see why you would want to put a device out that only does games. Unless there's a super technology paradigm shift, it's not going to shift back." End quote. Matthew Seymour, employee of Heavy Iron Studios, went on the back Lyle up by stating, quote, with all due respects to Sony and Vita, it's a car wreck. And how about Xperia Play? I'd love to pull up the numbers on that. End quote. So Lyle did bring up an interesting question. He stated that if people didn't pay $249 for a 3DS, why are they going to pay $299 for a PlayStation Vita? Looks like he forgot that there is a $249 Vita out there. But anyways, that question doesn't really make too much sense to me because Nintendo's hardware has always been cheaper than PlayStation's hardware. Gamers are willing to spend more for PlayStation hardware because it's more geared to a hardcore audience. The hardware is always better. So that question, I don't quite understand that. Now, he did bring up a good point about people not wanting to carry around more than one device. No one wants to carry around three, four different gadgets. But at the same time, yes, iPhone, Android gaming. There's great games out there. Some of the visuals on iPhone and Android devices are amazing. But at the same time, trust me, I was at E3 2011. I had the opportunity to play the PlayStation Vita. Guess what? I have one of the latest Android phones. And yes, there's some great games on there, but they don't come close to like Uncharted Golden Abyss. There's, they don't even compare because they're dedicated gaming handhelds. With the mobile phones, they're more geared towards short sessions. Whereas the PlayStation Vita is going to be more geared toward people that are flying, pe taking the train, taking the bus to work, whatever they're doing. These are fully dedicated games that these companies are investing millions upon millions of dollars into. That's why they're not going to cost five, six dollars, ninety-nine cents like some of these iPhone and Android games. Two totally different markets. And then what really got me is when Richard Seymour came out and said it's a car wreck. So no offense to Heavy Iron Studios, but which one of your games did too well? Just, I'm just asking. I mean, I, I did my research. That's just a simple question. And to call it a car wreck well before the devices even came out. I mean, were you guys not watching the conference? When Sony announced $249, $299, the audience went nuts. I was sitting there firsthand. I went on forums. People were like, I'm buying this day one. People were expecting $350 for this device. They got one that's $249 without the 3G, $299 with the 3G. Great deal. I think it's going to do very well. Will it do as good as the original Nintendo DS? Likely not. 
but Sony aims for a hardcore market. Just like the PS3 is not going to sell anywhere near what the Wii has. Totally different market. The Wii is reaching out to a much broader audience than Sony is. We'll see what happens. I personally think PlayStation V is going to be a huge success. They already got the support. Things like cross game chat, which I'm going to get to in a second. I think Sony's going to execute it very well. The PSP did very well. And I think the Vita is going to do much better than the PSP personally. While we're speaking on the PlayStation Vita though, the official press release related to the PlayStation Vita's RAM has released. When the PlayStation Vita was first revealed earlier this year, during the month of January, hype grew rapidly after seeing the powerful hardware that the upcoming handheld would be packing. While we have all known the CPU and GPU that Sony decided to go with for the PlayStation Vita, questions related to the amount of RAM in the device were raised. According to a new press release from Sony, the Vita will contain 512 megabytes of memory RAM and 128 megabytes of video RAM. Sony confirmed that the RAM is in place to allow for background tasks while gaming, such as cross-game chat, via Vita's party system, and to assist in game development. The question regards the cross-game chat for PS3 was once again raised, and Sony denied the possibility due to memory limitations of the PS3. So if you did not already know, the PS3 has 256 megabytes of memory RAM and 256 megabytes of video RAM. PlayStation Vita has twice the amount of memory RAM as the PS3 and 128 megabytes of video RAM. That's why cross-game chat will be possible on the PlayStation Vita. You also got to keep in mind, with the way that Sony launched their PS3, their development kit, 512 megabytes of total RAM. For them to add cross-game chat when some of these games have been developed up to a certain point and need a certain amount of RAM, it's not going to work. I always felt that was the case, but it's nice to see Sony finally come out and reveal that. Yes, it sucks, but at least we know we don't have to keep wondering about these rumors or anything like that. Now, Microsoft. Their upcoming dashboard has been named and it's been detailed. Robin Baroas, product marketing manager of Xbox Live for Europe, the Middle East, and Africa, revealed that the upcoming dashboard update for the Xbox 360 is currently named Twist Controls. The redesign is set to integrate connect voice and motion controls within the menu, along with provide new channels and a top display to allow for navigation while using the standard Xbox 360 controller. Robin went on to state, quote, Hopefully it's easy to browse. It's intuitive in terms of the way the surfing experience will actually work. The core community have been saying to us, I've been doing this one activity, but I really want to play Call of Duty with my mates when I've got four or five of them online at the same time. People are still text messaging each other and sending messages on other platforms. This is an easier way to do it. Hopefully the new dash will show this service proposition goes beyond gaming. We'll never lose our focus on that gaming audience. In fact, Developing the investment infrastructure to develop programs like cloud storage and Facebook posting and the beacons are three examples of continuing to invest in that space, end quote. So it's nice to finally have a few more details on the upcoming Xbox 360 dashboard update. For anyone who's heavily involved with Kinect and likes to use Kinect, should be a great update for you. Now the PS3 version of Battlefield 3 will be superior to the Xbox 360. During a recent presentation from DICE, developers of Battlefield 3, they revealed the PS3 version of Battlefield 3 will support SPU-based deferred shading, while Xbox 360 will have tiled-based shading. DICE states the 360's lack of SPUs did not allow for them to implement SPU-based shading into the Xbox 360 version, which would have allowed for better visual fidelity thanks to having the ability to utilize the SPU and GPU together. Because of this, DICE has confirmed that the PS3 version will contain better shaders and improved environments over the Xbox 360 version. Now this, I'm sure fanboys are going nuts over. Do not let it get to you. If you have a PS3, buy it on the PS3. If you have a 360, don't get upset that the PS3 version may be a little bit better. If you have both consoles, but you prefer Xbox Live, get it on the Xbox 360. It's not going to be a huge difference, I can promise you that Battlefield Bad Company 2 looked outstanding. Battlefield 3 even looks better. It's not going to get worse than Bad Company 2. Trust me, I saw it at E3. Blown away. Battlefield 3 is my second most anticipated game coming out this year behind, gotta give it up to Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception, especially 
after what they showed during their Gamescom conference. And while talking about Gamescom, PS3 prepares for holiday 2011 with a 17% price drop on the PlayStation 3. To conclude Sony's 2011 Gamescom press conference in Cologne, Germany, Sony announced that the 160GB PlayStation 3 will retail for the price of $249.99, down from its original $299 price point, and the new Infamous 2 Limited Edition PS3 bundle sporting a 320GB hard drive, a copy of Infamous 2, and 30-day membership to PlayStation Plus, and will retail for the price of $299. That is one heck of a deal. Especially with the holidays right around the corner. If you do not have a PS3, why not get it now? $299 gets you 320GB PS3, one of the best games to come out this year, and 30 days of PlayStation Plus. If you don't have that much to invest, get the 249 version. Still a great console. That concludes it for the show this week. But before we head out, let's go into the question of the week. Do you guys feel that dedicated gaming handhelds are dead? Do you think devices such as the PlayStation Vita and the 3DS should just not exist anymore? Do you think that mobile devices such as Android and iPhone have taken over? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I've spoken quite a bit about this on thegameraccess.com. If you guys have been following, you would see that. And I do agree, yes. Android, iPhone, they have came a long way in the gaming market. The hardware in Android and iPhone just keeps getting better and better and better because updated a lot more often than these portable gaming handhelds. It's just sort of like the PC versus consoles type of movement. PCs always come out with new hardware. Phones always come out with better technology. Whereas when you buy a PlayStation Vita, that's probably going to be spec-wise the same specs or minor upgrades next five, six years. Five, six years from now, they're going to have a phone more powerful than the Vita. They're already talking about quad-core phones coming out into this year, early next year. So, it's going to happen. But, when it comes to game development, people aren't spending millions of dollars to develop on an Android phone. Why? People that buy games on the Android, they're not paying 40, 50 bucks for a game. They're paying 99 cents, $5, maybe $10 at the very most. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. That wraps up Nick's Game Review episode number 49. I want to thank you so much for your support. Next week is Nick's Game Review episode number 50. I'm trying to get some stuff for you guys. But thank you so much for your support. Stay tuned. I have a lot of stuff in the works. Let me know what I can do to make my show better. Better my productions. If you want to contact me, you can email me at admin at Follow me on Twitter. Twitter.com forward slash the gamer access and be sure to visit the gamer access.com. I also have a Facebook and Google Plus account, which you will see at the bottom of my video with all the description and everything like that. Thank you guys for watching. I'm out. Check back for episode number 50 next week. Access granted.